Welcome, I'm Mr. Kimball and this is your Flipped Classroom. Hi, I'm Mr. Kimball. Welcome to Physics. Today, we're going to go through the disclosure, and there's going to be a quiz at the end of this, so make sure you take some notes and pay attention. If you need to, you can always stop, rewind, and uh, review the material. Uh, make sure you get 100% on that disclosure. That's going to substitute the typical uh, signature that we send home. Okay? So I'm going to start out, we're going to talk about uh, what physics is. So physics is going to be a study of motion, forces, we'll talk about light, some energy, um, we'll get to gravity, and we'll do some other things like that. Lots of graphing. We'll use advanced algebra skills and some trig. So if you're not up on the math, um, typically we say you have to have been through secondary math two, um, and then you can take secondary math three concurrently, uh, which you do much better if you've also had secondary math three. This is not a math class, and so the expectation is that you understand how to manipulate uh, formulas and solve for variables on your own. Uh, I will help you along the way, but uh, by and large, you should already know most of those skills. Uh, but we're going to go over some expectations. Um, lots of graphing. Uh, you're going to take a lot of class notes. Most of your videos are going to be done at home, and so you'll have the expectation to take video notes and then a follow-up, kind of like a reading quiz almost, about the video. Make sure you understand the content before we move on to our classroom experience where we'll do labs, additional practice, and help. You're going to need several items for this class. I'll go ahead and write them down. All right, so you're going to need a graphing calculator. You're also going to need a six inch. Uh, it usually works best. That's that little. That's going to be very helpful for us as we um, measure angles and you can also use this as a straight edge some kind of digital device. If you are currently in a position where you're fighting for Wi-Fi in your family or you fight for computer use, you need to talk to the school where we can check you out a computer um, and arrange for some classroom time or school time at the end of the day to, to fulfill those uh, digital needs. You're going to need a notebook. Um, these are the notebooks right here that we typically use. It's called a composition notebook. Uh, this one's 100 sheets or 200 pages. It doesn't matter. This is uh, college ruled with the lines. Um, you can get the ones with the graph paper, which I would suggest that, that we'll do a lot of graphing and table making. That usually makes life easier for you. Um, but one thing that we do ask is that you have a sewn notebook. Now these paper, pages can't be torn out, um, which is very helpful. We're going to use these a lot. And the spiral notebooks or with the ones with the, the top flight perforated edges, they don't seem to last very long. These are 50 cents right now at Walmart. Go out and get one, get two. Um, they're pretty useful, but you need one of these at home and you bring the same one to class every single day. So that's going to be very important. Uh, success. And you're going to find out that I can't spell. So I think that's how you spell that. Uh, number one, right? You need to have the materials with you every day. You need to be organized. Now, that looks like different things to different people, but I would suggest you use your planner. Okay? Very, very important to use your planner, your planner, 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 or a calendar of some kind, an app on your phone, something to keep track of due dates, uh, projects, when things are due, that sort of stuff. Okay? A lot going on in your lives. You need a planner to be successful in this class. Communication. Communication, 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 and communication. I write that 18 times. Communication is extremely important, especially with the circumstances that we are running into this year. Now, the attendance policy is basically going to get thrown out the window. Okay, A lot of things are going to come up this year. COVID-19 is a big problem. Um, you may never get sick. Hopefully you never get sick. But chances are, uh, you're going to run into a vacation time, somebody in your family is going to have an issue, and we're, you're going to have to communicate uh, ahead of time or during uh, questions, problems, other things that come up. If you aren't communicating, you're not doing your job. When you disappear from my class, you got to send me an email. 
okay? Somebody in your family should say, oh, hey, you know, uh, Johnny, they went to the hospital, they're really sick. And I'd be like, oh man, that's, that's terrible, okay? Uh, or if, uh, you know, hey, we're fine. You know, my, my sister got COVID. I'm not sick, but I have to stay home, okay? Uh, what can I do to stay caught up in class, okay? You gotta, you gotta communicate. You gotta be an adult because you're gonna be given a very long leash with assignments and due dates and attendance, all right? Um, and, and ultimately your penalty is that you're gonna get so far behind in class that it's not gonna be enjoyable anymore. And that's one of the things that you know I strive to make my classes are fun, enjoyable. I, I want you to come to class. I want to see you every day. Um, and, and when you don't, you know, we wanna try and provide that to you as best we can at home. And that starts with communication. Okay, um, there will be a couple different ways to communicate. I will put up uh, right in here. I'll, I'll put up my email and my remind. Uh, one thing that you should not do: do not use Canvas Messenger. All right, um, on Canvas, there's a way to email the professor or email the instructor, and I, I don't get a special notification. Um, that's not a good way to reach me every day. In the library, we are working out an agreement with your SBOs and the AP students. They're gonna spend time in the library uh, from these times, 12.30 to 1. That is a great place to sit down with a Chromebook and get on the homework site and work through your homework problems um, with another student. Self-advocating. All right, this is huge. This is really, really, really important. I do my best to ask you and, and we'll have a lot of time to go one-on-one -on -one and say, hey, how'd you do on this? You know, do you understand what we're doing here? Can you talk back to me what, you're, what you should be doing? If, but if for some reason I don't get to you, right, fall through the cracks or, or you disappear into the online world and, and I'm only emailing you, you know, once a week and, and I don't get anything back from you, if you're not self-advocating about issues or questions that you have, you're not doing your job. All right, to be successful in this class, to have the materials every day, to be organized, communicate. Go to the library for extra help and make sure you're advocating for yourself, right? It's a terrible saying, but the loudest bird gets the worm. Late work, uh, no docs, okay? Now, unfortunately, we do have deadlines, okay? Um, my deadline for all grades is gonna be the week prior to the end of the quarter. I'm not gonna penalize you. Your penalty is you're gonna feel behind and you're gonna feel like you have twice as much work as everybody else because you do. Okay, retakes, everything. Heck yeah, why not? If you wanna do the same thing 10 times, you can do the same thing 10 times. Now I would advise that the learning process goes like this. You go home. You watch the instructional video, you take good notes, you take the online quiz, participate in the discussion. You come to class, we do some homework problems, you advocate for yourself, you help ask questions, work with other students, you participate in the lab, you're fully engaged in class in our shortened periods of time, you get what you need, okay? And then you go home and you take your final quiz for that concept or that unit, whatever it may be, and you're done and you move on. Okay, retakes are there as a safety net. Okay, I'm a strong believer that time is a variable. Now what that means is that if you have to learn something and it takes you the whole semester to learn it, it takes everybody else a week to learn it, that's a variable. I still want you to learn it. If it takes you three weeks, it takes everybody else four weeks, great, you're ahead of the curve. So. Time being a variable allows you the opportunity to ebb and flow in your instruction, in your learning, it gives you time for your brain to, to accept what we're talking about and to really understand it, all right? For some people, that means that you're gonna spend a lot more time in this class than any other class you have. Physics is just like that. Some people, it takes a while for it to click. But uh, late work, retakes, we should probably talk about grades. Here we go. It's a fairly non-traditional grading method. I don't do pluses and minuses. Um, and yeah, of course, we'll round. If you get anything above an 80 
right? You know enough to be successful in college. So here's the, the GPA grading scale. Okay, right here is the grading percentages. Should be 70% um, assessments and 30% homework. And so things that fall into the assessment category are really only gonna be tests and quizzes. And everything else is gonna be called homework. And I, I use this term loosely. Um, it's practice is what this is. This is practice, okay? So things like papers, projects, any research you do, uh, labs are the rules, all right? Don't have a whole lot of rules, okay? Uh, be, be respectful to the teaching and learning process. Fully participate in all online activities. There's gonna be a bunch of them. Right now, um, if we have 15 students that's kind of the magic number. If there's 15 students in the school that test positive for COVID-19, then we are going to go 100% online. Okay, so it's very, very important for you to wear your masks, wash your hands. You know, don't be up in everybody's grill and breathing on each other. You got to be smart. Masks. Okay. You're gonna have to wear a mask um, or a face shield or both. Um, that is the, uh, the number one thing that we're gonna do to keep you safe. Um, after every class period and before every class period, we're gonna wipe down computers that we touch, the desks, the handles, we're gonna wash our hands, we'll have lots of hand sanitizer, have lots of cleaning spray and towels. Uh, the plan is to still do labs and activities. It will be beneficial to come to class and get that hands-on approach to physics, which is really what makes physics fun. But we gotta be safe because nobody wants to go home 100% of the time. There's a lot of value to participating, you know, face-to-face. -face. If you are sick, if you're displaying these, these uh, symptoms of COVID-19, uh, or you were exposed to someone who has tested positive, you need to stay home and you need to communicate. So you communicate with your teachers, uh, the administration, shoot me an email, the school policies, which are uh, listed in the planner, you know, things like dress codes, you know, what you can and can't bring to school. You're gonna have to go through that in your planner. Um, and then once you go through that, you can get back online, take my disclosure quiz, and, um, and that'll be our, our su suffice as our signature, as our parent signature. Really excited to have you in class. Most important thing is for you to be safe, for you to come, and we'll, we'll learn together.